Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma. Uh, I'm making this video although I wasn't going to intentionally according to a, a centralized plan that I follow. Uh, I'm making this video because somebody in the comment section requested me to do sort of a Fourier series example which was not that trivial. So with that, let's get started. Let's first introduce the function whose Fourier series expansion we need to find. Sine of x multiplied by natural log of 2 times cosine of x over 2. Yes, that is that is quite a function, I would say. Well, the the classical approach that we did for finding the coefficients of the Fourier series expansion is uh, our expansion goes like a naught plus sum n equals one to infinity of a sub n cosine of n x plus b sub n sine of n x. This was typically how our uh, format went for. Uh, Fourier series expansion of a function f of x but in this case and then you know you knew the formula for a n and let me specify the range since we have cosine of pi over 2 is 0 natural log of 0 is undefined we will choose to kind of exclude them okay whatever anyways taking a limit there so doesn't matter so the formula for a n and b n was basically integrating f of x with respect to all of these guys. Something like this, I believe. I, I, I you know, there are different versions. I'm not sure which version I used in in which video, but. This was basically the idea of finding this coefficient. Okay, if we try to do this kind of thing, forget this factor, I may be wrong. Don't uh, eat my head in the comment section over it. So f of x in our case is what I've defined here. So it's sine of x and we have a cosine of nx natural log of 2 cosine of x over 2 dx well it's not that i it's not that this integral can't be done but that it's really bad to do like i wouldn't prefer to do this i would like to look at different approaches and the, the same thing for the bn coefficient again ignore the factor up front but the idea is we have sine of x with this sine of nx and the natural log. So this integral is definitely non-trivial. We're going to have to do some manipulations. But again, I would not like to do this integral. It's not that it's it can't be done. It definitely can be done. And there are greater mathematicians who can do it with you know more ingenious techniques. But I just don't want to waste that much energy and time on doing these integrations I hope you I hope you get my point so which means I have to look at something different rather than these integrations uh, doing these integrations is the classical method of finding the Fourier series coefficients and that is not what I'm gonna use for this video at least and maybe that's why this video is important so thank you whoever uh, requested me to do this okay so now let's consider we have uh, our original function f of x as sine of x multiplied by the natural log of 2 times cosine of x over 2 so I'm just gonna say g of x is like the natural log part 
and I am not going to use the conventional method of calculating the coefficients of the Fourier series expansion of f of x because let's just face it the integration is really bad even if it may not be impossible okay now what I can do is use Euler's formula cosine theta is e raised to i theta plus e raised to negative i theta over 2 well substitute that in for this cosine notice this 2 and that half cancel out we have e raised to i x over 2 plus e raised to negative i x over 2 that's it now what we can do is sort of take a common denominator because the exponential with the negative power is just 1 over the positive equivalent so I could take a common denominator here so I have 1 plus e raised to well sort of multiply them so you add the powers and then minus natural log of e raised to i x over 2 which will just be natural log of 1 plus e raised to i x minus i x over 2 fair enough this is a g of x now I can do a similar approach if I start from this guy instead of just converting everything to a positive power I can write everything as a negative power so I have e raised to negative i x over 2 plus 1 over e raised to negative i x over 2 again take like a common denominator here so I have e raised to negative i x plus 1 negative natural log of e raised to negative i x over 2 and I finally end up with natural log of 1 plus e raised to negative i x plus i x over 2 so now what I'm going to do in both these cases of g of x, I'm going to use the Taylor series expansion for the natural log of 1 plus some argument, which is going to be sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus first power over n. And then the argument raised to the nth power. So e raised to i n x. We have minus i x over 2. Similarly for this guy sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n e raised to negative i n x plus i x over 2 and this is also g of x so there's g of x and g of x I will add both of those so I have 2 g of x and notice the i x over 2 and the negative i x over 2 cancel out that's nice you know our expression our function does not have any imaginary parts because it was a real function to begin with so now we can sort of take a common index I could have taken like a different letter index of summation for the second sum but I chose the same because we were going to add them together anyways I have e raised to i n x plus e raised to negative i n x well bring the two on that side and notice what we have here we have e raised to i n x plus e raised to negative i n x divided by 2 and then if you remember Euler's formula here that's just cosine of that angle so this is going to be well, the prefactor is the same but except now we have a cosine of nx this was g of x right okay what do we do now well we have g of x and if you remember f of x was g of x times the sine factor so uh, the sine of x well the Fourier series of the sine of x is the sine of x because basically a Fourier series is a linear combinations of sines and cosines of varying frequencies so I mean if, if you have linear combinations of sines and cosines well how many how many how many sines and cosines do you need to make a sign well just one with a frequency of one so well that's the Fourier series expansion of the sine what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides of g of x by sine of x so that I reconstitute into my f of x I'm gonna do that for this uh, infinite series expansion here So I have cosine of nx and sine of x. Now 
I mean, you could leave the result here because you know sine is basically a component of the Fourier series, so it's valid to leave it here. If we had a, a complex function with like a different, with with a non-trivial expansion in the Fourier series, then we would have to basically multiply two infinite sums, and we would have to use a Cauchy product of series, and it makes sense because it's sort of the discrete version of the convolution that we have in the Fourier transforms which are continuous but since it's a sign we don't need to worry about that it just simplifies everything awfully but this is a more general approach so, you, know, you know if you have like a product of two functions like this you find the Fourier series of one separately, Fourier series of the other separately, and then use this Cauchy product of series formula. Okay. Now what I'm going to use for this, because we can simplify it further, is this identity. 2 times cosine of A times sine of B is simply sine of A plus B minus sine of A minus B. We can clearly identify which one is A and which one is B. So we just get sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And we're going to have, we had a 2 here, we don't have a 2, so we multiply and divide. So you divide to compensate here. And inside you're going to get sine of n plus 1 times x minus sine of n minus 1 times x. Okay, uh, is there a way to simplify this? Because apparently the, the guy who requested this video, I, I believe his name's Alexi. Uh, well, he, he showed me the form he wanted the answer to be in. So I'm going to convert this guy to that appropriate form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some terms of this series. So writing some terms of this series, we see that it's like one half for n equals one sine of 2x we have sine of 0x here so don't worry about that because that's 0 minus 1 fourth now for n equals 2 sine of 3x minus sine of x plus well 1 sixth for n equals 3 sine of 4x minus sine of 2x and basically this goes on to infinity okay what we can do is first of all you notice the sign x over 4 just take that out common you'll, you'll see why I'm doing this in a, in a bit and then the remaining terms sort of generalize them so we have sum from say now n equals 2 change the index a bit minus 1 to the n divided by 2 the first guy after changing the index is just going to be sine of n x right because you change start from 2 n plus 1 becomes n divided by well it had an n factor if you notice the pattern that's going it's sort of it's sort of following uh, so we had 1 here, n equals 1 here, and well, n is equal to minus 1, like it's, it's like 1 lower than what's in here. So it's going to be n minus 1. Because if you notice for the first term, we have sine n equals 2, sine of 2x, and then this is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, and then we have a 2, so we have 1 half here. So you notice the... the, the the trend for the, the this first term now for the second term it's also sine of nx and that's because we pulled out the 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 sine of x guy which was sort of disturbing our initial uh, variable of summation so we we want our sum to start from basically this this two over here this sine of 2x but notice we have like a 3 we should have a 3 
in the denominator so it's n plus 1 so it's always if it's 2 this should be like 1 greater than that I hope you see the pattern here if you can you can pause the video if you want it's just just observing and applying a few things that's precisely why I pulled this uh, sine of x over 4 out so that I could start everything, both those signs, with an n equals 2. And then, well, what you do is just some algebra. So you notice you have negative 1 to the n. You have a sine of x divided by n squared minus 1. I think this is the form. Uh, the viewer who requested this video wanted the answer to be in. Um, it's also kind of, I know, weird to see that if you like integrate this guy, f of x, on the interval divided by the appropriate coefficients, you get a piecewise answer. You get a sine of x over, you get one fourth for n is equal to one. And then for greater than 1, you get negative 1 to the n over n squared minus 1. So it's a piecewise answer. The coefficient of this Fourier series is 1 fourth when n equals 1. And it's like negative 1 to the n over n squared minus 1, or n greater than 1. Yep, that's like the thing with this. So I hope I hope the, this video satisfies you, especially the Alexi who requested this. So that's it. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel guys. Recommend me to your friends. Spread the word of Gamma Da Gamma in the math community. In the meantime, stay home, stay safe, keep doing math and peace out.